What's up everybody, welcome back to Studio Reef. This is uh, part three of fixing up my tank. So if you guys missed part one, I can put that right here and part two right here. So what this basically is, is that we are fixing up a neglected reef tank to get in prime shape for the winter. This episode I'm going to do some of the most important maintenance so far, uh, such as replacing GFO, doing the water change to get the tritis out the sump, having a look at the skimmer of some of the weak spots there and some nice tips on how to be on top of things for the future. So welcome back guys, let's get into it. Alright, so it's time to have a look at the MP40s. Uh, this one is the standard one. And on the other side I have the quiet drive, but as you can see they are filled with uh, coralline algae. And I just kind of like the the look of when they, they look brand spanking new. So it's time to get them out. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bucket and uh, fill it halfway up with water and halfway with the distilled vinegar and just take all the pumps out and put them in there. Right, next up is up here. These little teeth for the overflow. I'll just get these out and have them in the bucket as well. There's another one and the last one. Right, so this is 50% water, 50% vinegar. And um, I have heard stories of people leaving the MP40s in there too long so the wet side gets all noisy. That is a risk that I'm willing to take because I am going for that fresh look and I didn't touch these or clean them for the past uh, couple of months. So I leave this pump running and I think I'm going to get a bit more water in there. This is about one liter of vinegar, one liter of water so I'm going to put in a bit more and uh, yeah we'll check back to this in a few hours. So this salt water has been sitting here for a couple of days now. One subscriber asked me about uh, how long do I keep my salt water mixing for and in this case I actually kept it a good couple of days. Two reasons, one is uh, temperature and the other one is uh, the pH. So I, I check those and make sure that we are where we're supposed to be uh, because I really do believe that uh, doing water changes is a pretty drastic roller coaster for all your water values. A lot of these corals are knocking themselves over because they have split into so many heads that the platform that they stay on is no longer big enough to support them. So I need to make a fragging video. I believe that will be part four. So if you guys want to see that, just uh, put a comment below and we'll definitely do that again. So yeah, let's get into the water change and pick things up a bit. Basically I have this bucket that's going to be my drain bucket and here we have the fresh salt water that's going to get pumped back into the system. So it's going to be a lot of buckets hauling. So I probably time lapse this, but anyway let's get to it.
so up next is the GFO. Uh, this is the reactor I used by Deltek. And I have a really love-hate relationship with this reactor. I really like what it does, but I hate the way it works. It really uh, amazes me the bad engineering of this one. It's so hard to get it out and in of my system and to take it apart and clean it is just a pain in the ass. So uh, I'm really, really open for suggestions if anyone out there has this same reactor and has a good trick for uh, cleaning it. I'm going to show you how I take out the old medium and this is the most messy part like you have to get a plastic bag and somehow get that on top of the thing while you pull this up and turn it upside down and I've had this go wrong so many times. I can't describe how much of a mess this exact uh, thing can make. Cleaning the insides is uh, not so bad. You have this little foam pad and then you take it apart, uh, clean it up, put it back together and put in some fresh new media. So the media I have here is uh, from Rofos. It's the cheapest one, at least in my country. And like every other uh, GFO, you have to rinse it. So that's what I'm going to do next. And then we're good to go. So with the GFO replacement out of the way, I know I'm good for about two months on this stuff before it starts uh, depleting. So uh, moving on to the skimmer is where I do feel the most attention is needed. And the reason is not so much the skimmer cup and the skimmer neck. As important as that is, the most important part of a skimmer to me has always been the air intake. So many people don't know this, but when your skimmer starts running like shit, you don't really need to take it apart and go crazy on it. Just take out the air intake and have a look right here. You can see the calcification building up and clogging up the air intake. This really, really decreases the performance of uh, the overall skimmer. So that pretty much wraps up episode 3, so while I do the editing for next week I look forward to reading you guys comments and thanks for all the subscribers and thanks for sitting through 8 minutes of me doing stuff on my reef tank. I really appreciate you guys, I can't wait to make more videos, I'll see you next week, thanks for watching, bye bye.